Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the eighth tutorial in my HTML series on how to code in HTML. Uh, today we're gonna learn uh, about a little bit more about formatting. This is gonna be a really short episode, probably. I say that, it's probably gonna come out at like 30 minutes, something silly like that. Um, but uh, basically the reason why this is gonna be really short is one, because we've already covered formatting, but also because formatting is really not such a done thing in HTML anymore. With the advent of CSS, there's really not much need for it anymore. We're also gonna talk about the span and div tags today, which are a CSS thing, which I'm just gonna introduce to you, but not really give you too much information about now. Just basically telling you they're there for completeness sake, but if you really want to learn about them You'll probably have to go to my CSS tutorial series, which will be coming soon after this I imagine so Let's open up our index.htm add the doc type and font oops HTML Oops, I forgot the exclamation mark. You can tell I'm tired uh, when I forget to type out everything or I'm typing everything out wrong. Uh, <laughs> so close our HTML tag. So we have our HTML element. And I'm gonna make a body element. And there we go, that's gonna do it. So I did promise last week I would talk about the font tag. Now, the font tag. The font tag, let's make a paragraph. <laughs> let's make a paragraph element. So go ahead and open a P tag and then close a P tag. Then within that, let's add this bit of text is in a stupid font. And um, let's save that and see what we got. Um, most of you will know what we're going to get and expect it because you've been following along. And it should be obvious by this point what this does. This bit of text is a stupid font. Indeed. But it's not. It's a lie. So let's fix that. Let's add a font tag before and make all this text into a font element. So I'm going to close it at the other end of wherever I want this stupid bit of formatting to end. And let's go for it. So actually, this may not work uh, because this declares it as HTML and that generally means HTML5. So we might have to remove that tag. Uh, but not to worry right now, this tag you shouldn't use this anymore, but for completion's sake, I'm going to teach you it. Um, it's All this will be done with CSS later, but if you're a old school HTML guy, which I don't know why you'd be watching this, or girl, uh, I don't know why you'd be watching this because you already know this, but uh, here's how we used to do it in the old days. Uh, so in the font element and in the font tag, we're going to add an attribute called size oh geez and then i'm gonna press equals and then open quotation mark and then i'm gonna set it to five and then i'm gonna close quotation mark and then i'm gonna save it and then we're gonna see what happens what happens refresh it's bigger yes so this does still work um but it's really not meant to this is no longer classified as proper HTML, but it does still work for backward compatibility sake. So what happened? Um, in HTML, uh, the font tag, uh, you can specify a size and that size can be anywhere between one. So let's just see what one looks like. What does it look like? It looks very small. Oh, sorry, I moved my window. Very tiny and we can go all the way up to size nine, which is pretty big. Um, you can't go any bigger than that. You try it and it will just be the same size or it won't work at all. Let's see what happens. It's just the same size. Okay, so nine is the limit on the top and one is the limit on the bottom for as small as you can go. Three is just regular size as far as I remember. I've not done this in a while. Maybe not. It doesn't quite look like three. Maybe four. I don't know. I can't remember what it looked like originally. Anyway, uh, so size just changes the size, but there are better ways of doing that with CSS, which when I get to my CSS tutorial series, you will get an idea into um, where you can actually set the size to whatever you want. You're not limited by size nine or size one. So there you go. That's, that's one bit. So 
what if we want to change our font to be maybe Comic Sans or Arial or whatever? Well, how would we do that? Well, we'd add another attribute for to our font tag and say face equals quotation marks. And in those quotation marks, write the name of your font. So uh, the easiest way to find a font is uh, Generally, to open up something like Notepad, go up to Format, go up to Font, and then find whatever stupid font you want to use. Uh, I feel like Comic Sans is the, one of the most horrible fonts that you can uh, pick, so we're going to go with that one because that is a silly font indeed. So I'm copying the name exactly as it appears, pasting it in here, pressing Save, and then... Boom! Suddenly... Our font is all funny and Comic Sans-like because we've set it to Comic Sans. Now remember, its face is the attribute where you set the name of the font. It's kind of weird for anyone that's set a font before because you're like, eh? Surely it would be font equals Comic Sans rather than face equals Comic Sans, but no, this is just the way it works. And it's actually the proper way to say it anyway, but anyway. Moving on. One thing to note with this is if you use a font that is not available on the computer that you are programming on, it will not appear. It will just, the browser will pick a different font uh, that is on your computer. So if you were to example, for example, send this uh, web page or get someone else to open up this web page on a computer that did not have Comic Sans, it would probably just open with the default font, which wouldn't look nice. Now there are ways around this with CSS later on, but right now using this old horrible method that should be outlawed, uh, well, it, you can't really do anything with it. So one last thing I guess we'll do is color, uh, because, oh geez. It's good to get into this, I guess. So the attribute name is color equals quotation marks. And remember, this is all in the font tag. And let's just write, I believe you can just write something like white, save. Yep, and now the text is white, can't see it. That's maybe a bad choice. Let's try green. And now you'll see it's green. So there's actually a list out there somewhere. W3Schools has a good list of all the colors that you can use here, all the names that you can just type in. Or if you're feeling advanced, you can use... Um, <coughs> sorry. If you're feeling advanced, you can use hex codes. Sorry, my... Brain is going blank because it's been a long day. <sighs> but yeah, you can use uh, hex values. So, for example, you might type hash indicates that you're going to type in a hex value. If you don't know what a hex value is, don't worry. You're not going to be using this right now anyway because it's bad practice. I mean, it's not bad practice. They won't know what a hashtag uh, hex uh, value is. But I will teach you this properly in depth when we get to CSS, okay? So just hold on for now. So the way this works is there are two characters that stand for R, two characters that stand for B, and two that stand for G. You know what? I will probably make a separate hex decimal tutorial so you can understand it. Let's just skip over this for now. So if you know what you're doing, you could make up a color. For example, I'm gonna make a purple right now. And we'll, hopefully that comes out as purple. RGB. Oh, R. I may have said that in the wrong order. It's RB, RGB is the order. But anyway, sorry, forget that. Anyway, it's pink. Great. Let's make that a little bit more. That was the wrong direction to take that in. Anyway, forget about this. Um, basically, if you know what you're doing, you can enter in the hex value of the color that you want. Uh, you can get hex values of colors by using a tool or uh, something like GIMP and using the color picker. If you don't know what I'm talking about, do not worry about this right now. Just type in the name of your color, for example, gray, and usually it will have it. So gray, and yes, it works. So. We have learned the font tag, and I have spent way too much time on this. So. One last thing before I go, there are a bunch of other tags that I have not gone over in terms of formatting. 
I'm not going to teach you them all because there's a bunch of them and uh, I don't have the time to spend. But uh, if you are interested, then just go searching it up. W3Schools has a list of all the different formatting tags that you can bust out. Things like, for example, did you know there's a tag called code and then slash code? And then whatever you type in here, for example, if you were like typing some code, I don't know, int value equals 23. Now when you view this in, uh, in your document, refresh, it will be formatted as if it would be if you were editing the code in an editor. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about right now, then this probably doesn't apply to you because the only reason why you'd use this is to display code in a way that makes sense. So as you can see, if I just type some stuff, it'll probably be more obvious that the font entirely changes for the within the code tags. This is just a form of formatting. Basically what the code tag does is changes the font face. That's all it does. But there's a whole host of these different types of tags. Um, uh, just just look through them. Things like small, strong. Strong will make things look more bold. So let's uh, type strong. I believe that's what it does in it. Yeah, so there, there you go. That's now bold. I guess that's an alternative to bold. There's a whole bunch of these guys. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know how many times I'm gonna tell you that. Let's try another one. Let's try small. Uh, many semi-useless ones that I, I just can't see you ever using, but there you go. That makes a smaller bit of text. Tons of them. So have fun, go wild, search up all the different formatting tags you can if you want them. Um, and that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Uh, that ended up being longer than I thought it was gonna be. But that is formatting in a nutshell, just all sorts of different tags in HTML for formatting. But we will go over formatting in a more tangible way in CSS. So this is really something you don't need to learn. It's just something that I'm teaching you for the sake of completion in terms of learning the language. And I will uh, teach you in greater depth how to make things look the way you want when we get to CSS. Okay, thank you for watching, guys. And I'll be back really soon with another episode about something else.